All right, bruh fans. Look, look. Where's this excitement coming from? Is it because my last video had all the cutaways and uh, it was like 41 minutes long? But yesterday, I did not post my bro review. I actually focused more on the sisters end of the spectrum and got those videos done. Because I had a list of almost like 18 videos to do. And I'm like, okay, I'm at home now. It's not like in my apartment where I could record every hour, any minute of the day and not have to worry about waking people up. Plus, my nephew wanted to play Power Rangers on Switch for like two hours yesterday. <sighs> I whooped his ass like 32 times, but he's getting better. He's getting better. So, in any case, I'm like, okay, the bro review, that's going to take a lot of work because, you know, I need to figure out what cutaways I want to do and everything. But, unfortunately, if you're looking for cutaways, it's not happening this week. It sucks. Don't I had like maybe six ideas, but... There were a lot of people in the comments of my videos yesterday. I woke up and I was reading the comments on everything. Where's your bro review? Season 2, Episode 7, High School. What are your thoughts? I'm like, what? Where is this coming from? The bro, the bro videos never get love. It's like, you know, the cast love them. I got some devoted followers who love them. But overall, they don't get like 5,000 hits like the other videos do. So all of a sudden, now people want my thoughts on it. Okay, okay. Well, seriously, it is sad. I don't have, I had like three Shrek ideas for cutaways. But unfortunately, because people want the video right away, I can't do it. Plus, I got like a bunch of happen to have not videos I need to record. So remember, kids, my scheduling with recording is a little bit different since I'm at home because while everybody's at work, that's a good time for me to do my content. Next week, my nephew starts summer school. Um, and my sister and nephew are moving out in like a week or two. So, I'll have the house to myself most of the time so I can record then. But um, today, my nephew, they went over town. He's getting a haircut. My sister's getting her hair done. So, I got the house to myself for a while. So, that's why I'm able to knock out the content. So, again, I'm sorry to Pam and Mike because they said they loved the cutaways I did last week and I said you know what I'm going to add them in every episode I can't do it this week I'm sorry please don't hate me because trust and believe I have a lot to say about this episode um it was pretty much cut into two different scenes where the first the bulk of the first half was at Tom's apartment and the back half was taking place at the bar uh, we got the return of Lydia who I don't believe we've seen since like episode three uh, but yeah, we're at season two, episode seven, entitled High School. Um, seven out of ten, it did have a little itty bitty problems, but I'll get to those soon enough. But before going further in the video, please take a moment to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content to the channel. And follow me on social media. Links are in the description box below. So, we pick up where we left off. Tom wants to know what the hell Pam is thinking and doing because Mike is standing right there. He's like, what the hell's going on? It's like, you know, Pam just feeling up on Tom. Tom, Tom, t tell him what we were doing. Yeah, yeah, it's like, P Pam, no. It's like, seriously, the Obamanisms. Tom was like, you know you, you know what, Mike? I, 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 you know, I'm just, I'm not in the mindset right now. You know, Pam, you, you ruined things. You, I was trying to arrange a treaty between you and Mike, uh, Bill and Regina. Yet you went behind my back and took the row that was on the hook. And you put it on. And you, you're coming out here like it's the Senate. And you're making me an enemy of the state. Now, Mike wants to walk out. And seriously, stuff. Look, Mike, I was like, yo, is Mike going to put hands on Pam? Damn. So... All this craziness is going on where Mike is just speaking his mind in the sense of Pam pissing him off. I mean, Pam was worked up because I think I got it wrong in my review last week. Like when Mike came over and Tom was trying to explain things. Look, you know, yeah, he's a bitch. You know, I, you know, I don't want to have anything to do. The thing about Mike that I find funny... You know how that, some people are like that when they're mad, like they don't get loud or anything. Like they'll be like, you know what, this bitch here, you know what, I don't want to fuck with them anymore. They ain't none. They full of. He's all calm with it. But the thing was, I thought he was talking about Bill, but he was actually talking about Pam. So that's why Pam came out of the back because it's explained about seven times, yeah, seven times that Pam was in the bathroom. She overheard everything Mike was saying. So it's like, you know what? 
I put on your robe, I came out, and then I wanted to do it to piss him off. And it's like, okay, Pam, if you wanted to piss him off because he was talking shit about you, that made perfect sense. But why you had to throw Tom underneath the bus? What you, what you throw Tom underneath? He's a tall dude. You're going to throw him underneath the bus like that? So, Pam wants Mike to keep talking his shit. No, go ahead. Say, say what you were saying. Say what you need to say. No, 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 no. He's going off. You're a whore. You're a slut. And the more he gets riled up, the more Pam starts feeling on Tom. And Tom's like, look, Pam, another time, another place. Just not right now. <laughs> so while they're going at it because Mike is, you know, he's like, do something. She's like, do something then. Put your, hand, put your hands on me, then, nigga. Put your hands on me. Then out of nowhere, Bill and John roll up in there. And I'm like, oh, damn. This, I, I was so focused on Pam and Mike maybe it was the camera angles maybe I didn't see them open the door and come in which goes back to the whole nobody in this well nobody in Tyler Perry shows knows how to lock the damn door so yeah I mean but you could argue well Jeremy Bill said he had a key to Mike's place so who's to say that Bill and or John don't have a key to Tom's place that's that's actually true. Wait, didn't John also have a key to Bill's place when he was packing to go to L.A.? Yeah. But in any case, they come in and try to break up the fight because, hey, hey don't put your hands on it. Like, no. Don't, look, don't go to jail. Don't go to jail. Because Mike is like, you know, I was like, yo, if Mike put hands on Pam, what? Are we really doing this right now? So, the part that got me, and I don't know if you caught it. Now, I, I mentioned this as a joke in my review last week. I'm like, okay, so first it was Bill. Now it's Tom. John just sitting over there waiting for Pam to hit on him. Did anybody else notice that John grabbed Pam? You know, of course, to break up the fight. But, you know, I just noticed how he grabbed onto her specific, uh, spe uh, you know, specifically. I don't know what he was holding on to with a firmer hand Pam's waist or the case of beers he had in the other hand because as soon as he grabbed her to separate Mike and Pam for going at it Mike got so pissed that he just shoved Pam John and Bill on the couch and then he walked out like what the hell's going on here so I'm just over here laughing to myself like Lord have mercy John grabbing Pam it's like oh no John wants to ride on the John wants to ride on the Pamela go round too. It's like first it was Bill got a kiss, then uh, Pam wearing Tom's robe and feeling up on him. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get me some of this. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? Look, I don't know if that was how it was directed specifically, but if it was, hilarious. So, um, Mike shoves them all to the couch and then he leaves. And I'm my here's my main question the entire time. Where the hell was Greg? Greg was in the back, but I'm thinking to myself, after this entire scene was over, uh, after Pam and Regina left, I'm thinking, Greg probably overheard everything going on, and it's like, you know what, I ain't trying to get involved in this bullshit. You know, I should have just went down the hall with uh, Officer Grills and, you know, hung out with her girlfriends, drinking out of the wine glass and chilling, while I'm just sitting up here minding my own business, and all this bullshit's going on, it's like... Are, are all the men outside getting lit up by these women? Nope, I don't want no part of this. It's a good thing Tom stopped me from flirting with Pam. So, in any case, um, for like the eighth time, she, you, you know, I, let me just say, I feel bad for John. John didn't do a damn thing. He just wanted to know what was going on, and he couldn't even get a word in. Mind you, yes, we all have a friend like John who doesn't know when to stop talking, or they always got diarrhea of the mouth at the worst possible times so and nobody wants to talk about it so after mike has left and everything has kind of calmed down tom's just sitting on the arm of his chair pam's just you know legs crossed just thinking like what the hell am i even doing here bill's like mm, ain't this a bullshit and john's just sitting there like raising his hand like can, can somebody please explain what's going on like we come in here and it's like World War Three. Well, what's, what's happening? So basically, she was in the bathroom, overheard Mike. And let me go back and say that if you wanted to see a surprise look on my face, it would have been when Pam opened up her robe, well, Tom's robe, and revealed that the only thing she took off was her shoes. And I'm like, what the fuck? 
I was like, no. But no, she literally didn't get undressed and put the robe on. She just had the robe on over her clothes. I know that's like a little thing, but I literally thought like, this heifer done went up in here and made it look like her and Tom had something going on. But no, I was like, that, <laughs> shoot, my, my face, priceless. So, um, she got the nerve. To start this shit in Tom's apartment and get mad at Tom because I can't believe you. You look, I can't really do a good Pam impression, but you know, I can't believe you. He was talking all that shit and you didn't even defend me. It's like, what what am I defending you for? I was trying to fix this. It's like, well, you know, a couple hours ago you said you loved him. And now you go up in my house starting all this shit. Tom didn't do Tom again with the Obamanisms, it's like Tom, you're just like Obama. You're, we're glad to see your brother doing big things, but we need that black side to come out. We need to. We don't need the white party. We need the black side to put a woman in her place. Like, look, I want to tell you how things went, go down. I bought you. Where's Regina? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Where Regina at? But no, you're going to get mad at Tom, and he ain't do a damn thing. You the one who strolled up in his spot, put on his robe, and made his friend even madder than he was before. So she did she did say Regina is coming over and she pretty much blows up at all of the guys. It's like, you know what, Mike is crazy. I'm in love with his dumb ass and he thinks that I would sleep with any single one of you guys. It's like, no, you're not my type. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? Is this a barbecue? Because guess what? Pam's having a roasting session going down the line. You, you, you. I was like, yo, this wilding out. She about to just she just going off on the black squad because she's seeing red right now. Look, if I had the wilding out sound effect. Look, I told you I wanted to do cutaways, but she kept rushing this damn video. I had so many ideas. So, John just wants to know what's going on for like the 18th time. I put on the road. Shut up, John. Oh, okay, fine. I just wanted to know. I came up in here. Y'all going off? It's like... When women, all we want, all we want is to love you. All we want is this. And John's like, what you going off on me for? I want somebody to hug. I'm like, John, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you there. If I were there, I would have gave John a hug because I feel I'm in, I'm in the same spot. It's like, why are you lighting me up? I ain't do nothing. I ain't even trying to hold you like that. I was trying to break up the fight. But no, 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 no. And Pam's just like, oh, wait till Regina get here, Bill. And when I tell you, Bill from SAP. Slightly aggressive pursuit. When this fool said, pop off Pam, I was dying. I was like, what? Pop off Pam. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me stop. Let me stop. There, there was supposed to be a cutaway there. I got it written in my notes where I was supposed to take a pause, edit, but I can't do it now. Gosh, ain't nobody got patience around here. Okay, okay. So, um... Pam calls Regina. Where you at? I'm a couple minutes away. It's like, what you doing? Where you at? Now we got plans. Don't say, okay, anyway, I'm sorry. So she calls Regina, tells her to hurry up. I'm speeding already. I'm like, Regina, don't speed. It's, look, it's late at night. You're a black woman. We don't need to get pulled over. There's enough shit, There's enough shit going on at Tom's apartment. You can't miss out on. We need, we need you to get there. So next thing you know, Mike calls Regina. I'm like, what the fuck? What? A First of all, how the hell Mike got Regina's number? That's my biggest question right there. Secondly, what you doing? Where you at? I'm sorry. I listened to leave the door open this morning when I was eating breakfast. So, he's like, hey, come over to my place so we can talk. About what? What are you talking about? About Bill. Something you need to know. Um, I'm actually busy right now. Well, how about this? You call me after you leave Tom's place. Okay, fine. I'm thinking... No, Mike, no, so John again is asking, can somebody please pour into my cup because I would love to taste this delicious tea that's going around, so <sighs> Pam got the nerve to stand up saying that all you men need to grow up. But she does take a moment to apologize to Tom. And I got to admit, she says, Tom. And, you know, Tom looking away. And then she kind of, like, hits him on the arm. It's like, Tom, I'm sorry. I don't know why, but that little, that little mo That's the thing I love about this show. It has these little moments that are realistic. It's like, oh, you ignore me? Hey, Tom, what? 
I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man, I can just tell these are just some friends sitting around uh, spitting off dialogue. It's it's so realistic. Okay, so she tells John to shut up for like the 18th or 19th time, and the guys want to know if Mike is going to get some sort of revenge on Pam by acting out at her. So. It's just funny how she tells the men they need to grow up and do this and that, even though she pulled that stunt with the robe. It's like, don't you, you talking about high school, don't you think it was a bit middle school of you to, you know, walk in there, put on the robe, and it starts, some, that's, this is literally some, you know, grade school shit. But then again, there are adults who act like this, so it is realistic. Plus, sometimes you don't really change. I mean, getting older doesn't necessarily change who you are. It might just bring out more than, you know, what you showed to begin with. Like, if you were egotistical, selfish, and whatnot during your, you know, developmental years as a teenager, who's to say it doesn't escalate when you get older? Just because you get a job and you make money doesn't necessarily mean you've changed. Uh, so, in any case, Regina arrives and Bill's like, oh, shit. He just kind of looked around like Bill's like, man, you should have left a long time. Maybe you should go back in the back and talk with Greg. Y'all should just hang out and catch up because you, you don't want to be here for this. So Regina walks in. And Pam is like, hey, 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 Bill, there's Regina. Why don't you tell her what you were telling me? And Regina's like, okay, I ain't got nothing to say to you. What? So it's confirmed that there was the plan to put Bill in a compromising position with Pam to see what he would do. And they were like, oh, wow, and you're saying we're the ones who need to grow up. You're saying we're the ones playing high school shit. And look at what you did. Yeah, okay. But I just want to know. Pam then just goes in on Bill. I'm just like, the fellas ain't doing a dick. If you want to go off at somebody, go off at Mike, okay? Mike. Well, then again, you can make the argument that, well, technically Mike hasn't done anything wrong yet this season. I mean, true, he's the one that arranged for the Natalie thing, but the bros were the one poking at him to act. It's like, Mike, do, do it for the bros. Help, help us out. Keep keep Bill from going to L.A. I, look, he's a grown-ass man. If he wants to do this, you know, he could do it. But it's like, fine, you want me to do something? Hey, Natalie, roll up on your boy. Guess what? Bill didn't go to L.A. Mike didn't make Bill throw Natalie around the apartment. Look, that was an intense scene. Just get in the shower. He ain't make him do that. He ain't make him do that. He was just asked to make sure Bill stayed, and he did. Pam was the one that showed up drunk in episode three. Mike was just trying to chill by himself. But no, and then she was the one feeling up on Bill, and well, Bill was the. I mean, it would have been interesting if Bill took Tom's advice and didn't tell Mike because I wonder how the story would have played out then. But it's like, uh, Mike hasn't done anything wrong. Now, if there was one thing about Mike, and I wanted to say this later in the video, it's the fact that what kind of friend is he to not give his bros the benefit of the doubt? I mean. He's quick to assume the worst about people. I mean, it's one thing about women, but these your bros. It's like you act like you don't give a damn. I mean, remember how remorseful he was when he found out from Tom about John taking the fall from the uh, the dean's daughter? And as a result, because up until that point, Mike's like, look, John, I don't care. I just want my money. Well, okay, I guess you could say, uh, I guess you could say well, Jeremy, when you say it that way, Mike is actually being consistent with his character. He didn't want to have a damn thing to do with Bill going to L.A. He didn't want to have a damn thing with John taking the drug money to get level 28. And he rightfully was remorseful after he learned what John did for him. So, yeah, you're actually right. He is consistent in his character, so I can't fault him for that. But at the same time, the women just went in on these dudes and they just minding their own damn business. I'm mad at Tom. It's like, this is my apartment. You ain't going to come up in here and disrespect me in my own home with this bullshit. And so they literally just go on about how men ain't shit. Now, nah, y'all ain't shit. Mike ain't shit. F y'all. Y'all just Bill running around with Natalie when you were chasing after Regina, ruining weddings and shit. Oh, where are my shoes? I need to get my shoes. I ain't got, oh, I ain't attracted to none of y'all. Just, no, John, shut up. Shut up. Oh, but John, thank you for handing me my phone. Bill, go suck a dick. What? What did Bill do to you, Pam? What? What did what Bill do to you? Because I'm thinking the whole time, somebody brought this up and I forgot about it. 
somebody's like, well, Jeremy, I mean, well, this was before we knew about the Regina plot or the, the scheme between Pam and Regina to set up Bill. After she had kissed Bill and he rejected her advances, she was still trying to come on to him. So it makes you wonder, um, is Pam actually feeling Bill like that or... I mean, I mean, maybe she wants to level up. You know, when you got the short guy syndrome and you're pissed off like that because they they made a point. It's like you know he's short and you really want to piss off a guy like that. I mean, look at Napoleon, look at Vegeta. Look, I ain't gonna lie, I almost cried because for like the past ten years plus, I thought I was five nine. I'm actually five seven. I ain't going front. I was sad. I was like, I thought I'm over here. My nephew is at my damn shoulders, and his dad is, like, really tall. And I'm like, if this boy outgrows me, I'm going to, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> it's sad, man. <laughs> going to be Stuart Little up in this bitch. Okay, so, after the ladies leave, again, John is just not allowed to say anything. But they think back to freshman year of college, and apparently there was some stunt that Mike pulled because... He had told a girl all the stuff that the guy said about her. So, when Mike, well, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, revenge is best served cold. Wait, see, I met revenge is a dish best served cold. I know that Kevin Hart messed up that line and ride along, then Lawrence Fishburne came up in there and corrected it. But in any case, uh, they said no, Mike ain't gonna pull a stunt like that. Wait, what, Regina? Does he got the phone number? Dun dun dun. And then John's like. Hey, uh, Bill, I know you want to go home and everything, but can I get a ride? Because, you know, I just... Uh... And Bill gave John an olive branch, and it made me sad. I was like, that's what I'm talking about, bruh. He's like, yeah, I know you need a ride. I rode you over here. I don't mind dropping you off because I, 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 I need to be with a friend right now. When I tell you, I was like, yo, that's what I'm talking about, bruh. Bruh's for life. But then as soon as they left, Tom closed the door like, what the fuck? No, Tom, you should have been saying that shit like 15 minutes ago when these ladies come up in your home laying into you and your bros like y'all ain't shit. I was mad. But then we go to the next scene. And lovely Lydia appears and tries to cut Mike off for the night because he's already had a little bit too much to drink. It's like, look, I'm the customer, right? Yes, but I have the right to cut you off. I noticed you've been drinking pretty heavily. But okay, I'll get, I'll get you one more. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So then we go over to Bill and John and they're, uh, you know, driving. Lydia calls John and I was like, John, oh, I'm so happy you called. As somebody who hasn't even dated and Lord knows when, even I know not to do that. Trust and believe. I'm like, John, I remember getting, I remember the first time I got a girl's phone number. I was nervous as hell. I'm like, oh my God, do I text? Do I call? How long do I wait? Long story short, I ended up messing it up, but uh, let's not go into that. Maybe that'll be a Jeremy tale later on down the line, but trust and believe, I've had my John moments where I did the completely wrong thing. <sighs> Five, seven, missed opportunities with women. <laughs> These bruv videos are therapeutic. All right, so Lydia says, hey, that little short one. I'm like, damn, y'all just stomping all over Mike's confidence. No wonder he has an uh, inferiority complex. Again, the Shrek clip would have been, do you think he's compensating for something? See, you missed out on some quality clips today. All right, so Mike um, is hella drunk. He needs a ride because, you know, obviously it's not safe for him driving. So uh, um, I was thinking to myself, I'm surprised Lydia didn't bring up the fact that my um, Bill and John walked up, walked out on the last time they had a tab and didn't pay it. So John says, uh, you know what, to Bill, you know what, um, I'll go in and get Mike because he's mad as hell at you. Even though I'm thinking to myself, John, that's a good strategy. But what's going to happen when you get Mike out of the bar and try to put him in the car and he sees Bill at the driver's seat? He'll probably try to choke his ass while he's driving. So Bill's going to stay in the ride and John doesn't, I mean, it's called out like, you know, John, you really don't know how to talk to people. You're like your mom. That was actually pretty funny because I actually think that's true. Uh, that's very accurate. You know, because we talk about how Alice goes on these tangents and uh, John does the same thing. Maybe not vulgar content like his mother, but he rambles on. So we get to the bar and Lydia is upset because John didn't call her. And it's like, 
You know what really made me mad? What, what, what was it? Because I'm thinking when she said she was mad, I'm like, it's about that tab, ain't it? But no, it's the fact that he didn't call her. It's the fact that you said, oh, I'm so happy that I called you. Ooh, John's in trouble. But John is like, and John was actually pretty messed up for this, but not to the same extent of, let's say, of a Mike or Bill sleeping around somebody else. It's the fact that uh, I believe the cur uh, term is curved, right? Curved. Basically because I gave you my number, but you never even called me. Because he felt inferior. I think that Bill even brought it up. Was it Bill, right? Or was it Tom? A couple episodes ago. Yeah, why don't you call that bartender? He's like, nah, I mean, I still live with my mom. I need to get my own self together. I'm like, yeah, that's a good move. But then I thought, oh, wow, that was kind of messed up. Because here she is expecting your phone call, and you never hit her back up. So basically, um, he explains, look, I ain't got no money. I can't take you out. I still live with my mom. He's being vulnerable and honest here. And she, she's like, I don't care about any of that. I don't care if I got to pay if we go out. I don't care if you live with your mama. I just want you to try. What? Is it that simple? Okay, not every woman's like that. And not every man's going to be vulnerable like that. Go back to season one. Mike was an asshole. To Pam, go back to my season one videos. I break it down. Mike was an asshole to Pam about, you know, going out with other guys and everything, showing up like a five year old, instead of just being upfront and honest about how he felt about her. Your actions need to reflect your feelings and your words. So, by John not hitting her back up, Lydia was like, oh, wow, so you're just like any other guy blowing me off or whatever. Okay, I see how it is. When in reality, he was feeling insignificant as a man. Rightfully so. Living with your mom, not having a lot of money, not a lot of men want to fess up to that. But the fact that Lydia's like, I'm willing to give you a chance, but I need you to call me. Okay, well, I'll, 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 I'll arrange it and uh, we'll, we'll get it going. Well, don't keep me waiting too long. No, I won't. Let me go get this drunk asshole over here and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk later. So, John um, goes over to Mike and wakes him up because he's passed out and it's like hey I know this is a lounging area but you can't be lounging your ass over on people's furniture let's get you up and go and you know uh, Mike is being an asshole to him and I'm thinking look I get that you're mad at Bill and Tom even though you shouldn't be but you haven't caught Mike I mean you, Mike hasn't caught John in a compromising position with Pam so it's like give him a break but he's like you know what? i love you i mean he's like look i don't want your fucking love but you know what you you good to me you good to me john okay let's go and then it's like you know this bitch over here i'm like mike basically talking about lydia cutting him off and everything like look she's not a bitch and i mean john gets kind of mad though and you know he kind of you know pushes mike like what you gonna fight me over this girl and then he just keeps going on and on about no he doesn't push mike you know they're both standing up at this point and Mike just keeps going on and on and on about she's a bitch and yada yada yada. And John punches him, knocks him out, and he's having trouble picking him up. And it's like, wait, you punched him? You really punched him? And I'm thinking the whole time Lydia's like, wait, you punched him for me? But no, it's like, you actually knocked him out? Yeah, well, it's no problem. It's like, well, you need some help. It looks like you're having some trouble. No, no, I got him. I got him. But the funniest part is when he asked Lydia to open the door. He banged Mike's head up against the wall. I'm like, John. <laughs> that was messed up. And then as soon as they left, she's like, wait a minute. Y'all ain't paid a bill again? Damn. But guess what? He deserved it. But here's why I'm not a fan of this scene. Why didn't John punch Mike? There was, there was the punch that Jacoby gave uh, Calvin at the bank that has that that scene went viral because of the way he fell but this particular scene here it's like Mike he was drunk he called her out of her name he didn't apologize but I don't think he deserved to get knocked out like that now he's going to be pissed off at John too well technically speaking John did knock him out so I can see why he would be pissed off as opposed to Pam and Bill and Pam and Tom having compromising moments with them, with her. But it's like, it would have been different if he was like trying to like grab her the same way he was trying to grab Pam earlier in the episode. Yeah, so it's a 7 out of 10 for me. I mean, the one thing is kind of like Loki episode 3. This was like the shortest episode so far. It was like 20, 21 minutes total, but I'd say about 19, 20 if you subtract the credit. So I'm like, I was kind of 
Like, wait, what? All the other episodes have been like 25 to 27. Like, why is this one 21 minutes? And then, like, the women being completely unreasonable towards the guys, even though they didn't do a damn thing. So, yeah, uh, I had fun with this episode. That I will say that much. You can tell because anytime the review is longer than the episode, that should tell you I got a lot to say about it. Um, I really wish Mike would have more faith in his bros. I feel like, you know, if nothing else, maybe we can learn a little bit more about Mike. Not just the whole inferiority complex. Like, apparently there was, what what was it said in like episode two or three when him, Tom, and John were at the bar and we first met Lydia. Apparently there was like a nun in one of their, uh, like what, in high school or whatever that apparently you know, he he hooked up with her and taught him everything he knows about women. Maybe it's like a short guy thing, because I can relate to it being five seven. Um, maybe it's one of those things where he doesn't really trust tall guys around women. Look, I completely understand that. I was always the shortest one out of my group friend group back in the day in college and high school. Like the other guys, they'll be taller and muscular. I was just the nerd, the bookworm, if you will, the nice guy basically kind of like the John of the group and all the other guys oh they would get the women and like even the ones had crushes on yeah I've been to two weddings for friends who married girls that they knew I had a crush on but they chose those guys instead and I'm like oh <sighs> but then it's like maybe John I mean maybe Mike has had some taller friends steal his women before hence why he's so quick to judge his friends if you will saying you mess around with Pam and it's like you didn't even hear your bros out you honestly think I mean aren't you supposed to be a lawyer kind of like Andy on sisters it's like aren't you supposed to be a lawyer aren't you supposed to look at all the facts before you pass judgment kind of like Andy being able to judge everybody else but not seeing the bullshit Gary's feeding in front of her face but no 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 you gotta check out my sister videos for that so yeah this episode um yeah it was pretty good I feel like a 7 is a fair enough score. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you agree with my score. Did you enjoy the episode? How about my thoughts on the scenes themselves? I feel like I have a lot more to say, but I got other videos to record and I feel like I've talked a mouthful. And um, I can't wait to see what happens next. This was episode 7. Season 2 has 19 episodes, so I could be wrong, but... I think the show might take a mid-season hiatus after episode 9 or 10, kind of like Ruthless did. So we may only have a couple more episodes before a break. And then, of course, I do a video going over my thoughts on season 2 so far. But as always, you know, I'm just seeing different characters interact. Like Mike calling Regina. Wow. Wow. Alright, well that's all I got for this particular video uh, at the very least make sure you like and subscribe or you can donate to the channel via paypal or cash app fingers crossed because uh i think a land surveyor is supposed to come out soon to survey the land that's been perked because after that's done we can finally update the freaking deed so my mom can give me the acres of land to put the house on so fingers crossed because like i said the sooner i get my house the sooner I have my own area and workspace so I can record videos around the clock. And you won't have to wait over 24 hours for your bro reviews. You can get them the next day or the same day depending on how many clips. So if you love my bro content because the people who are asking for the bro content to rush me where I can't do my damn cutaways. Where y'all at? Share the videos around. Help these videos get like a couple thousand views because... I was going to put bro on kind of like the Friday or Saturday back burner. Not to say that I wouldn't rush to get them done, but it's like, well, you know what? Bro doesn't get the same love as my other videos. So it's like, I want to put bro a little bit later on my schedule. That way, it's kind of like the last video I need to record so I can spend the most time doing it with the cutaways and whatnot. Because I feel like while the other videos, I might joke around in some of them, they're more to the point in critical analysis where, bruh, I can have my thought-provoking moments in the video, but I can have fun with it too. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. So thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.